morning. Our preaching text comes from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 25. It's on page 863 in your Bible. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. And the Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone. For he himself knew what was in everyone. You may be seated. So a few instructions before we begin our uh, message this morning. Um, when you just heard the scripture read, I read the part of the Jewish people assembled in the area. For the rest of the message, I'm asking you, the congregation, to read the part of the Jewish people. The words will appear on the screen at the appropriate time, and there are even some words that are underlined to help with your inflection of your voice as you read. Please follow those cues. Trust me, it will make more sense as we go along. So narratives. When you read a book, you get to imagine the sights and the sounds, the smells, the colors, and the people of a certain place. I enjoy reading a book before I watch a movie for that very reason. I enjoy putting my own picture in my head of the people, the places, and the things that I am reading about. For example, I had read many books from the Harry Potter series. And and I thought the author did a great job of explaining and writing what things looked like from her point of reference, but I had different pictures in my imagination than how the movie portrayed it. There were characters who looked much different on screen than they did in my imagination. They even sounded different in my imagination because I was reading the books and the words in my mind, since I'm a Minnesota native, sounded very Minnesotan. The books, however, are written in England and take place in England. My Harry Potter did not have a British accent. But when I think about it, I wonder why not. It makes sense that since these books were written by a woman in England and the location of the story, though fictional, starts in London, it would be natural to assume that the characters would speak with a British accent. Once you see a movie or a painting, your brain changes that image to what you have seen rather than what you imagined it to be. Now that I've seen the movies, I will always hear the stories with a British accent. This is exactly what we're going to focus on in our sermon series for the next six weeks. We are going to be listening to some of the voices in scripture that we have read some of us many times but maybe didn't hear. When we read scripture, it doesn't always come alive off of the page when we read it just as one voice. In this sermon series, we hope to have you not only hear these readings, but also understand the question and question the voices and tones of each of these speakers. It's easy to think that Jesus was always a calm, loving presence, but as both equally human and divine, Jesus experienced emotions the same way that we do. I know that each and every one of us has times that we are happy, sad, sarcastic, reserved, frustrated, questioning, and our voices most often convey those messages. Do you have that person in your life who you can tell by their voice, maybe on the phone or walking into the house, exactly how they are feeling? 
The very short two-letter word, hi, can convey an awful lot to someone who is paying attention. As we look at these scripture passages from week to week, we are going to hear them in different ways, to read them and to read into them what the context may be. Was this person scared, awed, frustrated? We are blessed with written word to read God's stories through the Bible, but wouldn't it have been nice to have a video camera or a voice recording? The sound of God's voice, the way that Jesus speaks, Now, I bet that some of you have a voice in your head that you imagine God to sound like. Mine is a cross between James Earl Jones, uh, Morgan Freeman, and Sean Connery. (laughs) But what does Jesus sound like? Maybe you've never even thought about it. Our scripture that we chose for today is from John chapter 2. In the book of John, the author takes a great overview of Jesus' life and begins his gospel focused on Jesus' teachings. Jesus has just completed his first miracle of turning water into wine and is now spending some time with his earthly family. Let's listen to the beginning of this text one more time. Jesus had gone down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, where he stayed for a few days. As it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables, exchanging money. Making a whip out of cords, he drove all from the temple, both sheep and cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Take these doves out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Okay, I want to pause here for a minute. First of all, we need to understand some backstory about Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Passover was a holiday during the week of the feast where they celebrated the slaves released from captivity in Egypt from the Old Testament. With Jerusalem being the site of the celebration, people traveled from all over to worship in the temple during the week. People were expected to make sacrifices during worship to atone for their sins, so this idea of people selling animals in the temple courts was so that the tourists could have unblemished animals to provide as a sacrifice during worship. These unblemished animals could cost any amount of money and were usually more expensive than outside of the temple. Now, this busyness in the temple wasn't just a couple people at a table in the corner trying to be unnoticed and out of the way. This was like going to a carnival or a fair and people coming up to you and wanting you to buy their item. Cattle, sheep, doves, people, sounds, smells. Are you able to picture it? Then the money changers. People came from all over the surrounding area, and because there was no local currency, all foreigners, or there was no state currency, all foreigners needed to change to local currency to pay their temple tax. Because of the need for all people to change to local currency, the money changers could charge whatever handling fee they chose and were exploiting the people of the temple, and they could do nothing about it. Think about buying a bottle of water at the baseball game or gas at a small out-of-town gas station in the middle of nowhere, 50 miles from the nearest town. You pay what they want, and you have no choice. So money changers were cheating the people. Animals were wandering around. Thousands of -of out-of-town visitors, different languages, children crying, the smell of animals, food, all while people were trying to worship. Jesus had gone down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, where he stayed for a few days. As it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. Making a whip out of cords, he drove all from the temple, both sheep and cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Take these doves out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Jesus was angry. And not just reserved, polite angry, but actually angry. The temple was the main place to worship, and the holiday they were celebrating was a holiday in which their sole purpose was to worship. Moving on to verse 18, and this is where you get to join in. Now the Jewish leaders who had rationalized their behavior were upset because this was hurting their bottom line. This was the one week of the year where they could make a bit of extra money. 
Maybe they wanted something tangible to believe in. Maybe they were pleading, what sign can you show us for doing this? Maybe they were questioning and they wanted proof from Jesus. What sign can you show us from doing this? You need to remember that he had just done his first miracle in Cana and then went to Capernaum and now on to Jerusalem. News about Jesus and his teachings may not have traveled all the way to Jerusalem yet. Jesus spends much of his ministry teaching in parables, telling stories to get his point across. He often doesn't come right out and tell people the things they are supposed to learn from his teaching. He tells them a story and then asks questions about how to interpret the story. The next verse is like that. Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The people are rightfully confused. He is standing in the actual temple, after all. Why would they assume he was speaking about anything except the actual temple that he was standing in? Were they angry when they responded? This temple has been under construction for years, and you will raise it up in three days. Or were they confused? as they had watched this temple being built by generations before them, some of them not even seeing it come to completion in their lifetime. How could someone raise it in three days? This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? The temple Jesus had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs that he was doing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. This time in Jerusalem was early in Jesus' ministry. But even then, Jesus knew what his mission was on earth, that, his, that he would be the temple that would be destroyed and would rise again in three days. Jesus spent the next few years teaching others about this new way to live where the laws were not meant to separate God's people, but as a purpose for how to unite them and to show God's love for them. Jesus came to the world to save it. Our hope for you in the next few weeks is that you hear these passages from the Gospel of John in a new way, with new voices, that will bring a new and vibrant life to the words and make them come alive for you in new ways. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we listen to your words through the gift of Scripture that you blessed us with, help us to discern the different voices that we encounter along the way. Be with us as we search for your comforting voice through all of it, telling us that you are there and that you love us every day. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.